On the way back we stopped in the great city of New York. At the Levingston Avenue train station, the Albanian painter Zoy Shuti was waiting for us. With whom we stayed for three days and three nights. And exactly at 1923 Suet Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11229. It was a two-story building with decorative red scrolls, characteristic of Brooklyn houses. Zoe lived on the first floor, but there were four large bedrooms with paintings hanging on the walls. Deep down, he was spiritually dead. I could see this from his portrait that resembled the famous El Greco. He was very energetic for his age, expressive, and with a temperament as sanguine as choleric. He lived alone. After an unfortunate marriage in Brussels and a car accident where he miraculously survived, he devoted himself to figurative art thanks to which lived and made a name for himself by opening exhibitions all over the U.S. But he became known in Europe, such as Brussels, Athens, Istanbul and Paris. But he was also known in Mexico and Canada where he was honored with important prizes. His coloristic painting inclined to poetic realism, a wild realism almost western. Through his paintings as landscapes, but also portraits with more character, a keen observer could notice his inner spiritual movements that captured a poetic crescendo. But fell into the black graphics, when his soul was without sun. In these moments, he abandoned the concrete of the city, the noisy asphalt and went out into nature. The fields where the wind and the reeds of the ponds blew and eased his tired feelings and gave him hope again. Most of the time, these were crises where a longing was sleeping great for the country when he had been forced to leave it that in those years when he painted eagles in the border pyramids. When he was a soldier, years had passed when he abandoned the dictatorship. In the following years he would open exhibitions in the National Art Gallery in Tirana. Shkipiri was close friends and companions. But even when the person dearest to him, his mother, died, it was a strong emotional blow that he had tried to reflect this pain in her portrait, even to embody it in the cycle of Mother Teresa. This was how his life had been, with a lot of pain, spiritual torture, but also joys. All these had been engraved in his physiognomy, the artist, this great immigrant, this Nolian Matathonimac who ran in the subways of New York to cut the red tape Albanian welcome there in America, his natives. Known or unknown, if only they were Albanians, compatriots. The idea for the documentary, A Painter in New York, was completely spontaneous. The film brought concerns to this artist about work, developments in his country, Albania, but also life in emigration. The whole movie, I am also familiar with his literary work, the still unpublished novel with the outstanding title, Box of Worms but also with another book in which Ishmael Kader was criticized as a very dangerous writer and the prefabs of Enver Hocker's regime. There was also a long poem. But the real Zoe was the poet of colors. When we left, he gave me a typewriter and the book entitled, Mordai of Heartbreak, 
by the American novelist, Saul Bellow, which I keep as a precious memory. With the dedication, Leon, poet and thinker, from Zoe's I Merge a Myth. Best wishes for the future. Zoe's, New York, June 1st, 1994.